Good evening, Baruch Haba, Ruchim Havoyim, Shir. Before actually uh, starting the Shir, I was still light. Chaparain started a half a minute early. I'll say a capital Tilim, capital Chof, for a first lemma for Baruch Rechel, Tipra, Bas, Malka. I'm not saying that we're David. Yeah, I'm not the new beginning. Sorry, I'm just like a shame. I'm a hey, I'm just not as a comic. I just I'm a tzio in Israel. Deco is Kurt Kalman. I say how I lost the way to Marcelo. You tell the whole hill of a vehicle. We're going to talk about Mali. The running of Israel. Say how I'm shame. I'm a hey, I'm not girl. In Mali, I didn't know. I'm a say how after your daddy. He has she. I didn't know. She has you. I know. I'm a good show. I'm very big. I'm very serious. Yes, I'm a good show. I'm a good show. I'm a good show. I'm Okay, so let's go. The first question which we have for this week is a um, question of Shabbos, Yachat Erevin. So here we have a porch, which is the, I don't know, the back of the house probably. It opens on opens up to a um to a communal garden which doesn't have an eru and wants to be able to carry out from this door into the little porch where you can see the bench uh there to be able to carry there so to put up a pole and wires that kind of that kind of eru arrangement was not going to be so uh convenient so I, I wanted to look into the possibility of a halacha of p tikra yore dvesosim, which means that the edge of the halacha l'moshim is Sinai, that when we have a, a, uh, a, a roof and the edge of the roof is considered as if it, it now becomes a wall. So that's the p tikra yore dvesosim idea. We'll read about this in, in the next slide. Here we have from the Timachin Samach Aleph and the Dinner of Erevin. So we have this idea um, of saying Piti Kroyerid Vesosim. Imagine you had a, a house and some of the walls have come down and there's a big gap, a big opening. So there is idea that that open gap could be uh, considered closed by virtue of Piti Kroyerid Vesosim. Then there is this idea that in Hilchas Erevin, that one does it's not normal to have an a doorway at a corner so you imagine if the corner of the house was destroyed so although you'd have also the remains of the ceiling but you wouldn't be able to use the concept of tipiti kriyoda association because it's at a corner which is going to be relevant to our discussion because here we looking at trying to create a mechitza on the front, but also to the side of the uh, of this pet of whatever this port. So now let's go further. I will pass an opening which is not at a corner. Then you could say Then you can take the edge of the roof and see it coming down as a wall. I feel he was even if it's more than a width of ten armors. But it mustn't be the full width. Now, coming back again, so we've got here two uh, arguments against using PT Kroyeri over here. One is because of the its or two sides, as there's a the corner here. And the other point is that it's the full width. It's not as if there's a remnant of wall on either side, and then you want to fill in the rest the PT crow is the full width. So that seems to be a problem. However, Yesh Oimrim, there is a second opinion which says, even if it's the full width, you can still say PT Tikrayoid Vasosim. And even if you've got two walls which are next to one another, which are, have fallen down, all the way. And but the, the, more the roof has remained. One can still do PT Kriyoid Vesosim. Im Nisharu Shom Shnei Mechitsois, Shnei Mechitsois, the Wukas Evasai. So you've got, there, was, there were four walls, 
two walls which are connected to one another, imagine of an L shape, are intact, are still there. The other two walls are missing. And still the second opinion said we'll be able to do Yodrosis, the Peter Yodrosis on the two missing walls. If the two walls which are standing are parallel to one another, and the two walls which are missing are at either end, where as a result, you've got like a corridor in between the two, that's when you could not do the uh, concept of repeating Kroyoidrosaisen. So the halacha remains like the second opinion that PT Kroyoidrosaisen would be acceptable in a case of when the two mechitzes are, desired mechitzes are connected at a corner. It says, it's preferable to be, take concern for the first opinion. Okay, we'll come to that in a moment. One last point is that this concept of particular yodrasosim says here, yesh oimrim, it's only if it's a flat roof, but if it were a sloping roof, kagag in shilon, or the typical European roofs, then one would not use the concept of particular. That's not relevant to us, but just for general knowledge. So, all right, so now the second opinion, which says, says you can do particular yodrasosim over here, with the two sides. Um, but there is an opinion which says you cannot. And he says, So I would suggest the following that here, actually, in, as I said before, we've got a wall which is less than 10 to In front of it is a communal garden. It's not a Rosh So there's more room to be lenient. Uh, and plus, the person who's asking the question lives in Northwest London, where there is already an Arif. So although it's not an aid of which we are all happy with, uh, not the holidays, but certainly it's enough to mitigate that you should be allowed to rely on the lenient opinion to do who you hear, piti Okay, um, let's move on. Someone in, uh, in Europe has been learning about a course about Hilchus Avelus, and it came up, the in you know, Tumor, a coin is not allowed to expose himself to become to me mace and not to a dead body. So we know that Koyanim are very careful about entering a cemetery, etc. And he, this Ingemani asked me, how does he deal with, he saw that the letter of the Rebbe, that letter is, um, it's in Igris Kodesh. Sorry, I don't have the reference in front of me. But, um, it is in Igris Kodesh, where it, the Rebbe says about the Rebbe, the, the oil of the Friedrich Rebbe, that when they built it, so they built a wall around the caver of tent Fochim high. The reason for this is to enable Koyan. So there is a whole discussion in Gemara where the Kivrit Tzadikim, Amakabal, do cause Tumor or not. And the Rebbe in this letter he doesn't want to rely on that. So Koyan would not be allowed to go to the gravesite of a tzaddik, um, Stamazoi, but the, by building a, a wall around it of tent fochim, that allows the Koyanim to be near the oil. Plus, there is also a distance of Dalit fochim from the actual grave. So there's two things there's a, a, a vertical wall and a horizontal distance of four tfochim, the wall ten of tfochim high, and the distance of four tfochim, that is acceptable. If there hadn't been the wall, then the coin wouldn't be allowed to be within Dalad Amis, which is about six feet or two meters. But when there is the wall, so then the coin mustn't be more, but mustn't be within four tfochim of the, of the, of a grave. Now, then the Rebbe says, the, the oil of the Frederick Rebbe is within a the middle of a cemetery, so the Koyanim would come there in a closed auto, in a closed car. And the car has a din of oil. There is a discussion in this is the oil Zoruk. There's a discussion whether a portable oil has the status of oil. And the Rebbe says that this idea, we're not talking about the Koyanim being over the graves proper. Rather, we're talking about the Koyan having to keep a distance of four, four amas from a grave, and for this helps to have a mechitza. For this, we will rely that the oil zoruk, that the car, even though it's mobile, should be enough as a barrier 
to allow the koyan to enter the cemetery. So this person who's uh, asked me the question, he's asking what's this business that the Rebbe is saying that the car serves as an oihel to protect from tumor. Thank you. Um, correction to the previous um, uh, um, message. I'm, I'm told that the story is in Manchester, not in London. Okay, thank you. Now, so coming back to this, to the car, there is a concept of intervening that to stop tumor spreading. So here we have a Mishnah in Olus Perikhes, Yesh Mevins Hatuma Vachoitzitzin. There are um, conditions which will bring tumor, they will also create as a barrier to block tumor. So there's just like there's an oil which creates a spread of tumor, but it equally creates a barrier that tumor shouldn't go to the upper floor. So there is a rule that something which is makabal tumor, which is prone to tumor, cannot be a mechitza in front of tumor. So since a car is made of metal, which is eligible for tumor, so then it cannot protect to, to, to obstruct the, the spread of tumor. Just to add another detail, there is a concept of a very large container, which contains more than 40 saw, which is, um, imagine the size of a, a fridge, five foot size height fridge, that probably contains about this, this uh, equivalent of 40 saw. So such a large wooden container is not macabultum. So that's called clay eights ha nachas. It's a clay eights, it's a kind of a container which would not be portable. It's so large, it's not the kind of thing you'd cart it around. Um, I'm not talking, it doesn't have wheels. We're talking about just a, a chest. Such a large chest would not be carried around molly um, vereikam. That's the Boshnan in Chazal. That, that uh, immunity of a large keli is only said about a wooden container, not about a metal container. Hence the question of our young man, how does the Rebbe take the view that the car is a protection from tumor, the car is made of metal, and therefore it should not be acting as a barrier for tumor. Before going further, I want to clarify a point here. There is a din of Tumas Oyel, and there's a din of the Koyan having to have a barrier between him and a grave. That's, we're talking here, um, no, he's not above the grave, it's just he has to keep a distance. And I don't have an explanation why the Rebbe is using here the term Oyel, because here, in the case of driving past a grave, we're passing a grave, we're looking for mechitza rather than oihel. The Rebbe seems to be um, joining the two into the same concept, which I, I don't understand, but um, probably if I do a bit more research, I would find, about, find it out. But never mind. Meanwhile, this is a question which he's asking. He sees this letter of the Rebbe that the, the, the car does act as an oil of protection for tumor, and is asking well, how does that work when the car is made of metal? He actually sent me a clip of a uh, of a, of a, a maggot shear in, in somewhere in New York who's talking about this, how a car is not uh, eligible to be mafsik bifnei hatuba. So I sent back to him, here's a quote, the second quote here on this slide is from Reb Zalman Shimon Dvorakin. There's a booklet, a small book called, a small safer called Koivitz Razash which is a, a memorial volume to Reb Zalman Shimon Dvorkin, who was the Rav in 770 for many years. Um, most of the Sefer is actually articles contributed by others, but the first 70 odd pages are from the few writings, which he actually didn't write very much. But, um, before going further, I want to also show you, I have a Sefer in front of you know, the screen called Shulchan Koyanim. It's a Sefer, a paperback Sefer put together by um, Yosef, uh, Yisrael Yosef Hendel, 
Koyen, who's the Rov of Chabad community in Migdal HaEmek, very nice Sefer, and he deals with two main topics are Birchas Koyanim and Koyanim being careful about Tumah. Meanwhile, let's come, let's read Reb Zalman Shimon's uh, letter about this topic, about cars being a protection from Tumas, uh, Tumas Mace. Now, I wrote to you, he says, that a car, well, a car work, protects, but ostensibly that should only work with a wooden car. A car which is made of mateches, of, of metal, is in, it's itself, it's prone to tumor. Even it's bore bemida, in other words, even though it contains more than 40 so volume, it should not be a protection from tumor. However, he says, avol bieves, afilu oihel shel matches, even an even uh, uh, even if it's made of metal, um, but the fact it's an oil, it does act. Uh, it does um, protect from tumor if it's a large kali. and he gives a reference to Rash the Shamshin Mishans, who has a commentary on the on the Mishnayos of uh, Seder Taurus in Olas, and we're going to, and the Pirush Harosh. We're going to look at those in a moment. We'll read them inside. They both say that although a Dovahama Kabul Tumma does not act as a barrier, that's only if it's not in the position of Oihel, but it's just a Kali. But if this same article is in the position of Oihel, so it is Makabal Tumma and it acts as a barrier to Tumma. Bahata. Because we're going to look at this surface and we're going to say there's an inside and the outside. We're going to say the outside is going to be Makabal Tumma and the inside is going to be a barrier to block the Tumma coming further. It's as if you're taking that oil and it, dividing into two slices and the, therefore it, it does act as a barrier for Tumma. Fascinating uh, Chiddush but it's actually it's not his Kiddush at all. It's written in the references which he gives. Now, coming back to that Mishnah, Perik Ches of Aulus. So there are things which are Mavi'in V'choytzitzin. And it mentions there about a Teva, a large chest, Mavi'in V'choytzitzin, if it contains 40 so. And then it says here, Yeriyo, Skortyo, Katvalyo, Vesadin, a sheet, a curtain, a, a uh, a, 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 a leather sheet, a mapot, a, a mat, machzel is another type of mat. If they are a suyin or holim, if they are spread, so you've got a sheet which is stretched out as an oil, it is makabal tumor, and yet it began, it's acting as a barrier from the tumor. It, it protects the, uh, the, the, uh, the other side above it or below it from the tumor on the other side. Let's read the first, the rash. Reb Shamshin Mishans, he's he's a, one of the Bali Hatoisfus. When Toisfus says Omar Harashbo, he does not mean the Rashbo from Spain. Reb Shloimeh Ben Aderes, he means Reb Shimshin Ben Avroham, who lived in Sons at S E N S. It's a town in France. Bali Hatoisfus, and is uh, he wrote a pirish on Seder Taras and on Seder Zroim in the Vilna Shas. You got on the inner margin is the Rambam, on the outer margin is Pir Sharash Mishans. So this is where we're reading from, Pir Sharash Mishans. Shehein Asuyin Katvalya. So he says, what is a Katvalya? A sheet of leather. Shehein Asuyin Oalim, Natsuyin Ke'en Oihil. And is referring to the Yeria, Skurt Katvalya, the Sadin, Mahabal, all of them are going to be acting as a barrier for Tumma. These are materials they are, which are eligible, are prone to tumma. And he gives references to, to elsewhere where we see that a mat is um, going to be macabre tumma. And he says, nevertheless, they still act as a barrier. If they are spread out like an oil, the oil shani. And once it's an oil, it's a different story. Although it is itself becoming tome, still it's matzalala tume. It, 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 it kind of um, obstructs the tumor 
from biocars of oil because it obstructs the tumor from penetrating through that surface to another surface. Um, that's the that's the rash. The rosh, the pirush rosh, is also on the margin of the of the uh, Vilna Shas, and that, that, but this is on Pedic Zion. But I took this from another edition, which is a little bigger writing, but clearer. So again, he says here, Klal Mishnah Zoi, Sad Pni Mishal Oyel, but Sad Chitzen Sheboi, Chashivi Kishnei Kalim. When you have an Oyel, one side is going to be Mikabal Tumah, and the other side of the same piece of cloth is going to be considered an Oyel to protect. And he, he goes through a lot of discussion and fall like three hands from the bottom, Vahai Nu Time, the Nechlek Mishnei Kalim. And therefore, the, the tumor will not penetrate through it, even though it itself is going to become tome. We must say of this idea of it divided into two kale, this, this, and therefore coming back to the car. Yes, it's true that the car is metal, and because it's metal, the car is macabre tumor. And yet it becomes an oil to protect the passengers inside that they are protected. The tumor does not penetrate through the, the walls of the car. That's basically what Rabbi Salman Shimon is saying. Um, this brings us to the other whole massive discussion, which was in the news years ago, about koyanim on planes, when there's, when there's a, a corpse on a plane and a plane flying over uh, a cemetery. I'm not going to go into that discussion. If you want to read about it, in that Sefer Shulchan Koyanim, which I showed you a few minutes ago, he's got lots of very interesting chidushim to, um, to uh, actually uh, find haterim for all of those situations. Um, that the, 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 the wall, the, the floor between the cargo and the passenger section of a plane should be able to act as a mechitza to stop the tumor spreading from, from the uh, cargo to the, to the passenger area. Okay, let's move on. So here, unfortunately, um, had a, they had a miscarriage at, at six weeks. And now, Baruch Hashem, they are expecting a boy, and they're asking the question, will this boy have a pidyon haben? So here we go. The, this is in Shukhan Aruch, Hilchus Pidyon Haben. It's the machine, hey. And the Shukhan Aruch talks about a, if there had been a previous child of, who would, survived till eight months, but did not survive. Then he says, even Hamapelis Layoim Arboim. Anyway, let's just focus on the, the, what's relevant to us. Hamapelis Layoim Arboim. If a woman has a miscarriage, the 40th day of, of that, uh, that pregnancy, Hanoilad Achar Kol Eilu Bechoyla Pidyon. After a, a child born after that, a boy born after that would be called a Bechoyer. Now, the thing is here in this case, it's not 40 days, it's six weeks, it's 42 days. Perhaps it was a little bit more. So it doesn't give us this security of the 40 days, which the Mechaber says. The Shukhan Aruch says 40, day, less, 40 days or less, you can discount that. Here it's a little bit more. Then, however, there are more ads. Holds man she'en evor of if the organs of that fetus the first fetus, were not formed, then it's not considered a, a, a child. It does not exempt the next child uh, to have a pidyon ben. And even nowadays, we would rely on our expertise. If you look at the, the fetus and you see that there's no formation of, of organs, then you would be able to say, okay, the next child, Bez Hashem, will have a pidyon abed. So reading the Shukhan Aruch, um, I, I, I wrote back to the couple, I asked them, did they see the lost fetus? Did they see any, any formation of anything? So they responded that they only saw it through a sonogram, which um, I don't know, I don't know how reliable, I mean, how, how detailed, uh, an image you can get from it. Um, so what I'm seeing is, once it's past 40 days, the Ramor says, if you saw that you could do a pidyon aben, but if you don't have that surety, then 
you would do a pidyon haben without a bracha. You'd say baruch hashem kol shalom b'tzvus of tzivanu al pidyon haben because there is much, you know, big likelihood that you are have to do a pidyon, but you wouldn't say a bracha because of stopping brachas. And here's a cute thing which I saw in the noisy kalim in the malachim that normally the father says the bracha al pidyon haben and then he says shechianu. And the Gemara in Psochim, I believe, in the end, has got a discussion who should say Shechion or the Koyen or the father. And the halacha remains that the father says. But there is an argument the Koyen should say the bracha because he's getting the money. In this case, because the father has a sophic whether he's doing a mitzvah, the Koyen is for sure getting the money. Therefore, the Koyen should say Shechion. That's, that's what the, uh, some of the Malachtim say. Bez Hashem. Okay. I wanted to address something which there was uh, in some websites or, or um, chats or um, a couple of uh, um, of Lubavitcher Rabbonim, Fluchim, who had been to um, to uh, suppers, uh, iftar suppers, um, Ramadan, they were invited and they were there. And for some reason, it was also put in, on uh, photographs, etc. Actually, was I was more riled up by seeing a a, a clip of a an imam doing chazonis in a prominent uh, synagogue in uh, this capital city, um, with in the presence of a mixture of men, women, some with hijabs, some um, perhaps they were wearing shayels. I don't know. Um, I was now so it, it was something which people are asking: What's going on here? Is it is this the uh, is this the uh, new uh, style of Kalponim? So the Rebbe, I wanted to just address that the Rebbe in the 50s was very, very outspoken against brotherhood meetings between clergy of the church, etc., and Rabbonim. It was, seemed to have been in the Vogue then to, yeah, we're all friends and we were all one. And the Rebbe was very outspoken against it. Um, and one of the points which he says here, here was a, a case of uh, Rav going to a meeting in a, which is in a building of the church, although it's not in the chapel. And he asks the Rebbe's opinion. The Rebbe says it's definitely Osim Nadin. Further, I have an issue of Mara Sa'ayin, because the onlooker doesn't necessarily understand everything. All he sees is, Chas Vashalem, a Haredi Sherov, and a, a, a priest who are, who are uh, sitting, you know, spending time as, as, as best mates. Um, there's another, there's a volume called... It's called Shrikas Kehil Chosa. You see this big volume. And here there's several pages about this. And one of the things which the Rebbe says there is uh, that if there's a young person who's uh, considering uh, marrying someone who's from another faith, when they see the rabbi is such a good pal with the clergyman of the other faith, then it's not so uh, wrong in their eyes to marry someone from the other faith. So the Rebbe is very outspoken about this. Um, now, you could say that the Rebbe is talking about Christianity, and this is about Islam, which is not a very Zara true. Uh, it's still another faith. It's, 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 a, it's another religion, I just, just if you didn't realize. Um, I, so I called, I called two of these Rabbonim. Uh, I wanted to ask them what was... So one of them tell is in deep in Russia, and he was happy to speak to me, and he said, you should understand that I'm in a republic, which is a Muslim republic, and before communism, in a, before communism came down, there was tremendous a, a suppression of religion. After perestroika, so the governments are bending backwards to show how they are accommodating religious life. So, and I am also the chief rabbi in this area, in this in this this republic, and therefore I have really I'm. I'm I have no, I'm, I mean, I feel very to participate if I am invited by a government to a government event. So he does, he has been going when there's a government um, event, uh, he would have to go there. He says, interesting, that after the supper, then the people go into worship. 
to worship into the into the mosque for worship, only only believers are allowed. He wasn't allowed in. It was you know it was chalash to go in, and they didn't let him in because uh, he's not a believer. So it's interesting for their place of worship, they don't allow a non-believer to come in. And here in a synagogue, they uh, are welcoming a person of another faith to come and perform Meshagaz, uh, Chazalas, Bechol, it's Posh Techil Hashem, that Eden are, are bending backwards to accommodate, and um, by them is uh, nowhere near the same. Um, then I spoke to another another rabbi, another shliach, in another country, actually, a very, uh, uh, I just say, Western culture, and again, he's the he's the he's the rabbi in the capital city, the only rabbi, and he would again differentiate between. He's got he's, he has various guidelines. He would differentiate between a government invitation, a government sponsored event, um, to uh, Stam being invited. So the the bottom line is that it's not for the cholech and to start running to take up these invitations. There is a, an element of. Chil Hashem is an element of of uh, cooling down the the uh, feeling of atav chatonim mikol amim hamavdil ben yisrael amim. One has to be very very careful about this. There's a tremendous responsibility um, to allow yourself to be uh, part of this PR, which is uh, maybe actually diametrically opposite of what we're trying to um, trying to encourage. Let's move on. So. Due to this question, because um, uh, it's, they asked that they found a pajama of the baby, which didn't wash so well, and there seems to have been traces of rice or buckwheat, and now it's after Pesach, and they're asking whether they have to burn the pajama. So every Shaila deserves an answer, and I wanted to bring this up, even if it had been Chomets. I would also be not so sure whether you have to burn the uh, pajama. Probably a, a thorough wash would have been good enough. But I wanted to share with you that buckwheat and rice are not chomets. They are subject to kidneys. And the rule of kidneys is, as you can see here, the quote from Tofnum Gimel, You are allowed to retain on Pesach itself you are allowed to retain kidneys in your house, even if they've been soaked, etc. So the chumrah of Ashkenazim, not to have kidneys on Pesach, is not to eat kidneys. Uh, we'd wash, if we did need to use it for something, we'd wash it separate kalim. We would be very careful, but it's not a problem of possessing and certainly no reason to burn those pajamas. Okay, let's go on to the next question about our remedy. And the Bach flower remedies, say so one of these homeopathic um, preparations, and it's kept in brandy. And there's several ways of using it, but this, which we're dealing with, is where you add several drops of this mixture into water, and then I, I believe you drink it. I believe, I believe so. So years ago, I looked into this, and I was quite concerned about it because of the Alter Rebbe has got here a position. Um, about Tarevas Chomets, which I'll explain that in Simitofman base, as you can see on the screen, the Alter Rebbe says about Dovo Shaderech Asiyosu. Something, if that is the way to produce this product, so he talks about Murias uh, and they would put in um, burnt bread, um, um, even if there is 60 times against the bread. Because this is the derech tikkun hamurios, if this is the procedure of how to make this preparation, this this brine, whatever, is dafka with bread, who choshu ve'ene bottle afilu be'ele. So here we have anyone who's learnt yeredeya yechas taruvus. There are several um, several anti bittles. So you got Dovash Yeshlamatirin, Dovash Milta David um Lataima, then you got um Khatiharuri Liskabid. We've got a list of things which are not going to be bottled. And here the Al Rebbe includes in this, based upon the Rashba, that Dovash Derech Asiyosoi, if this is the this is the recept, this is the procedure of how it's made, 
then it does not become bottle, even in a thousand. And therefore, it's not going to become bottle, even, uh, and, and with, with, with the Rabbonon, you're going to have to dispose of it. And if you didn't, you'd have to dispose of it after Pesach. So we've got this concept of Derech Asiyos, it does not become bottle. So here was my problem. This, um, this brand, this, this um, Bach flower uh, remedy mixed into brandy, if that's the Derech Asiyos, even though you're going to drop a, a few drops into a cup of water, and it's going to be bottled a uh, hundredfold, two uh, hundredfold, but it's going to be derech asiyoso. That's the way it's meant to be done. And the Alter Rebbe is saying, if that's the way it's meant to be done, it does not become bottled. That was my problem. The other problem was about bitul ein mevatan isla chatchila. We're not allowed to take an isur and uh, dilute it lechatchila that it should become bottled. Those were my two problems. Years ago, when I as I said, I looked into it and I spoke to the late Rav Falk uh, about this, and he had been Matir, and he gave me a reference. Of, uh, subsequently, I wrote this up. Um, and the, the, the point is that, why, why, what, what are they hetarim here? Well, there's an interesting halacha. If you have salt, um, which is treif for some reason, so then that salt will be will not be bottled because salt is a flavoring. It would not become bottled, even though it's um, less than 160. What happens if the salt per se is kosher, but the salt has, has absorbed blood, and then that salt was put in to flavor some food? So the salt itself uh, is not the problem. And what's the problem? The blood. But the blood is not there as a flavoring. So therefore, that would be kosher. It's an interesting situation. So although the salt, had, it, had the problem been the salt itself, it would not be bottled because salt is there as a flavoring. It's, the, it's, it's, it's a side issue. It's the, the blood in the salt. And that's not, not, not um, made for tasting, and for, for the flavor. And therefore, it's bottled. Um, you may remember there was a whole parasha about the anthocyanin, uh, which is made from grape skin, uh, um, grape skins. And when they obviously they're making wine, so they have grape skin. So the uh, this grape skin has got a bit of absorb the taste of the wine. Now the grape skin is put there for coloring. If it's made for coloring, it shouldn't be bottled. But it's not the grape skin which is the problem. It's in the grape skin. There's a flavor of, of the wine which is incidental. That's not put in for coloring. And therefore, there was this argument that the anthocyanin, although it's made from grape skins from non-kosher uh, wine production, should be bottled because the actual coloring is not from the uh, issur factor; it's from a from a heter factor. So that's the that was basically the answer. That with this brandy, we're not interested in being mavatal the brandy. We're interested in the active ingredient, which is, happens to be carried by the brandy, um, and therefore one could ignore the fact that this is the procedure um, and also ignore the Ein Mavatl and Isla Chatchila because you're not doing it to be Mavatl the Isser. You're doing it um, You're doing it in order to use the active ingredient. Um, had this been a Din Dei Raisa, one could be, uh, one more, perhaps we should be more Mahmir, we're talking about a Din Rabbonon. Clearly, as you see, the Alter Rebbe says, it's not being bottled as a Din Rabbonon. We're talking about wine against Damien, which is a din rabbonon, and therefore um, we could rely on the, this approach to say that this is not derech asiyoso, that's not what you're trying to achieve, and uh, that therefore it's permitted. Now, having said all that, I want to share with you, I want to share with you the following, that Reb David Cohen of South London saw this list of questions, I don't know whether he's online now or not, but he said he is actually a mashgiach on the production of Bach flower remedies here in London or somewhere in, the, in England for Israeli uh, clientele. And if someone wants to get hold of Bach flower remedies with a Hersher, he may be able to help you. So that's from David Cohen in South London. And if you want his number, you can look in the Tzach uh, list. Um, someone's asking, doesn't the salt become in the Vela? Good question. Um, we'll leave it for another time. Right. Now, here someone asked me earlier in the week that they have a, a young boy under bar mitzvah 
And in the long day, this is a question from Manchester, where the long days are even longer than London. And um, the child does not manage to stay up for Havdallah on Motsa Shabbos, because it's talking about 11 o'clock or even later. What about the, should this boy be encouraged to do Havdallah on Sunday morning? So Shemir Shabbos Gilchassar does say that one should be mechanuch, a child who didn't hear Havdallah on uh, Motsa Shabbos, to make Havdallah on Sunday morning. What I do know is many Chadorim, as in, um, how do you say, uh, in Chadorim in the United Synagogue, it's, it's the idea, would do Havdallah on Sunday morning because those children hadn't heard Havdallah likely at home. Um, I just want to bear, that, bear in mind that if you do Havdallah on Sunday, for whatever reason, there's, you have no business saying the bracha boirim oire ho'esh because the anniversary of the creation of fire is Motsa Shabbos, and you would not say it on Sunday morning. We have bracha levatala. Separately, the bracha on Basomim is not warranted uh, on Sunday morning, and therefore it could be a problem of a, of a hefsik between the Bayer Priyagofen and the bracha Hamavzal um, bin Kodesh Lachayot. I understand that in the Chadorim, they do use, when they do have doll on a Sunday morning, they would use have dollar candle that could be simply as al to 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 uh, just to communicate the idea of, of, of what have dollar looks like but for um, a, for an adult to do that would actually be brachal but meanwhile we're talking about a child now um asking around i think there's very few who will remember as a child making have dollar on a sunday morning uh, even from very from homes and that's very interesting that in, whilst the Shmir Shabbos Kolchosa says that a child should be doing Kavdol on Sunday morning, several other poskim say, no, not so. Um, you can see, and this is from the notes from the Piske Tshuvas, Shaloi Shamanu, we haven't heard. And there's an interesting point. You have the idea of Chinuch. Is Chinuch um, for the mitzvah proper, or also chinuch for when you didn't manage to do the mitzvah properly to rectify it at a later point, hashloma. So there is an argument to say that chinuch is only for the primary mitzvah, but if the primary mitzvah was missed and there's an opportunity to rectify it at a later point, hashloma, for that there isn't a mitzvah of chinuch per se. Uh, a fascinating proof is the mitzvah, the Mishnah, at the end of Maseches Chalo, it talks about um, Yosef HaKoyen, who came from out of Eretz Israel. He came, I don't know where he was, in Surya, wherever he was, and he brought his children to do a Pesach cotton, otherwise known as Pesach Sheni in Yerushalayim. They told him to go back. Apparently, he himself had done Pesach Rishon, perhaps, but he brought his children, perhaps he didn't, but he brought his children uh, to do Pesach Sheni, and they told him to go back. They did not want to introduce a new thing that children who missed Pesach Rishon should come to do Pesach Sheni. So they want to say that this, since Pesach Sheni is a Hashlama, so there's no mitzvah of Chinuch on a Hashlama. So the bottom line here is, um, is it a Chiyuv to, of Chinuch to have your child do Havdol on Sunday morning? And the answer is it's not a Chiyuv. Um, but if the child wants to, fine, that, that's okay, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't push it. Uh, and again, it would depend on the child, or the age, and etc. If the child's asking for it, okay, let them do it. Uh, and, and, but uh, not, one wouldn't have to uh, remind them, etc. Et Someone writes here, I believe that in Gitted boarding school, Rabelu, thank you, um, in the 50s, they made for the boys um, not 100% sure. I, I heard it from Rabbi Osher Island Gold. Yes, okay, so they're, they're, in Gates it's even more extreme that uh, Motsa Shabbos is probably closer to midnight. And so they uh, would make Havdol in the morning. Probably they made it without um, without um, without the broch and the fire. Okay, now then someone's asking me about Philos and they're reading this letter of the Rebbe. Now, we have a letter of the Rebbe, which is curiously not in Igras Kodesh. It's one of those letters which we don't know the date of it, but it's published in the back of the Kudosikas Chel Yud Beis. 
And here the Rebbe first talks about Birchas HaGoymel. Interesting, we have um, someone who came, who came, came to our shul. Uh, he dabbles usually in another shul, but he came to our shul and he said Birchas HaGoymel. In his community, they don't say Birchas HaGoymel on, air, on, on a air travel. He just came from overseas by, by plane. So he came to Lubavitch to say Birchas HaGoymel. He knows that we do say Birchas HaGoymel on a plane trip. Now, one of the arguments of not saying a bracha hagoymel is because hagoymel is for a journey. And, um, rochim. and there's a Gemara in Chulin which says something like the following. Derech, uh, it says, Derech Mishli, I believe, that the path of the eagle is in the heaven. And the Gemara says, Derech Nesha Ikri, Derech Stam Lo Ikri. It's not called a derech. A, a path through the heavens is not a derech per se. And therefore, whatever the discussion is over there, the Ragat Shoba says, well, there you see that Derech Bashamoyim is not called a Derech, and therefore you shouldn't be saying Birchas HaGoymel. The Rebbe takes issue with this, and he says, no, that the, we say Birchas HaGoymel even if it's not identical to the four conditions of Choyli Yam Yisur and Midbar, and therefore one should say Birchas HaGoymel for air travel overseas. And that's also written in Sefer Hamin Hogim. Our meaning is, if it's air travel over a body of water, then one would say Birchas HaGoymel, if it's air travel over land, one does not say Birchas HaGoymel. So flights from California to New York, they do not say Birchas HaGoymel, whereas when we fly across the channel, we do say Birchas HaGoymel. Okay, but then the Rebbe continues in the same letter, talking about Tfilas HaDerech. Now, again, the Ragat Shover, the same argument, which says that uh, it's not a derech, it's derech Bashamayim, it's not called a derech. So the Rebbe says, Tfilas HaDerech, it's not the point, it has to be a derech. The point is that you are exposed to the insecurities of not being in a built-up area. And therefore, you're exposed to a Mokin Sakana, and then you're saying it's for to be protected because you're out of your safety zone. And therefore, the Rebbe disagrees with Ragachova on this, and he says that uh, on an air, 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 air uh, journey, you should also say it's for Then the Rebbe adds another point. This is where we have to be careful. Vyoid. Generally, the journey by plane includes a journey till the airport. And at the other end, when you get off the plane, till you get to your destination, there's another car journey, etc. So you are using, you are hoylich baderech. However, el shalule hanasiya ba'aviron, if not for the journey on the plane, if you had gone to the airport and straight back, it's a Dover Rogel. Now, this is a bit of an enigma to me, but the Rebbe seems to be saying, although the journey to the airport is long enough, uh, it's a long enough distance out of town to warrant Philosadere, but son, since it's a Dover Rogel, it doesn't warrant Philosadere, which is an interesting point. At any rate, he says, If you're tra traveling to the airport by car, etc., and then you are traveling in uh, whatever form, whether you're traveling Bashamayim or not, to say that you can say the bracha on a because you have gone on a derech up until the plane and from the plane until you get to your destination. So even granted, the Ragachov's objection that it's not the derech bashemaim is not a derech, but you can still say tefilas derech because of the uh, journey until the plane and from the plane. Now, what is the Rebbe saying? Is he saying that you should say tefilas derech on the way to the airport? I don't think so. I don't think that's what he's, he's saying. He doesn't say yesh levorech bad derech ad laviron. He says you are able to say bracha tefilas derech on the journey on the plane. Be, by virtue of the fact that you've traveled until the airplane on an authentic derech. So that's how I understand Poshtab Shat. Now, when should you say Tfilas Saderech? Normally, one should say Tfilas Saderech when you are um, beyond, a little bit out of town, which is not very far, but a little bit out of the built up area, and preferably within the first parcel, which is the first four kilometers. Now, if you are on a boat, so then it's not a problem. You, don't, you, you wait till the boat is uh, a little bit, a few minutes 
uh, away from the coast, and then you'd stand up and say Tfilas Aderich. Tfilas Aderich is an ex excerpt of Shemun Esra, and Lachat Chilat should be said standing. So on a boat, that should not be a problem. If you're driving in a car, um, once you're out of town, presumably you're on a motorway, to stop the car, uh, to go out and stand is poshas sakonus nefoshas, and besides being illegal, and you can get a peanut penalty for it. So you say the tefilas uh, aderich whilst you're driving in the car. Uh, that's uh, that's the option. If you're on a train, yes, you stand up on the train uh, once you're out of town. There are no more houses for a while. So then you stand up and say tefilas aderich. What about on a plane? So to say tefilas um, aderich uh, when you're out of town, well. The problem is that then you aren't able to say to a standing because there's a seatbelt sign on and you're not allowed to stand up and be a chil Hashem if you do. So then you've got two options, either to say it once you are well out of town and the seatbelt signs are on, another option to say it's seated. Uh, I think there's another option, and that is as soon as you get to your place, you put your luggage uh, in the overhead bins, whatever, and say to a there and then standing, before you uh, sit down and put your seatbelt on, you can say Tfilas Aderich then. I, I once actually was in Stansted Airport on the way to Munich for uh, checking out a mikvah, and I had said Tfilas Aderich in the airport, but then my uh, my flight was cancelled because of snow in Munich. So I wouldn't say Tfilas Aderich in the airport for that reason. You never know whether your flight is actually going to go to go, go to go. But once you're on the plane, uh, the likelihood of the flight not going. Uh, once you're on the plane, is that much less? And um, therefore, I feel confident to say to Fils Adirch once I'm on the plane. And I can say it standing and say it with a guard my hat and jacket on. It's, uh, and yeah. Okay, let's move on. Um, Rabbi Lusa asking about Yerde Hayom and Oile. Okay, yeah, okay. Someone asked me about whether you're allowed to. He wants to, he's a, actually a shliach and he wants to serve over Yom Tov, he wants to serve freshly cooked pasta. And so is he allowed to use a colander for straining the pasta? At first, I, was, I wasn't I was sure, actually. And looking at Simitov Kofiud in his Yom Tov, it says um, about not using a nofel chvora, not to use a colander on Yom Tov. Um, even if you weren't able to do it before Yom Tov, you to put beans into a colander. He says first put to put beans into water, and to have use a flotation technique that the lighter ones float to the surface. That would not be allowed, or to have that flotation that the rubbish goes to the bottom. They're also not allowed, and nor should you be using a sieve or a colander uh, on Yom Tov. So, so I saw that and I was concerned, and yet I see here in the. Um, uh, in the Piske Chuvas in the same place. And he says that you, um, if it's something which you wouldn't have been able to do that same straining before, then you are allowed to strain it on Yom Tov. He, he, this is actually quoted from the Cheshav Eifet from the late Rav Padva. And he says, therefore, if you, itriot, that's the Hebrew word, modern Hebrew word for lokshin, etc. If you cook them on Yom Tov, you are allowed to use a, a strainer now, he adds an interesting point. He says that because it's not the psoilus of the uh, of the pasta is not a tr true psoilus. The water which comes with the pasta is also drinkable. And therefore, he combines that and just says, therefore, you are allowed to use a strainer. Um, whereas if it had been real uh, uh, real schmutz or whatever, which you wanted to st um, strain from the pasta or whatever it may be, then you wouldn't be allowed to. So let's re recap that. The Din Shukhanarach says you're not allowed to use a colander on your Yom Tov. That would be when the psoilus, which is going to be released to because of the colander, is, is a real psoilus, real waste. Whereas here, talking with a straining the pasta, the water, etc., uh, is not real psoilus. And therefore, it's okay to use a strainer uh, on Yom Tov. I see here someone on the chat has put a question. To go from New York to different states, to go over big rivers and big lakes. So, all right. Um, okay. Good question. If you're going over a big lake it, within the, the, uh, the uh, mainland of the United States, perhaps you should be saying, but listen, Baruch Hashem, there's Rabbonim in America. Okay. Um, 
Here we go. We, the Shabbos Shia, we were talking about, um, about washing um, cloth, clothes on Shabbos, which is forbidden under Malabin. And it came up the question, what about putting a strainer, the cloth strainer, which is put on the taps? Uh, people do it for Pesach to strain the water. Uh, is it, what's, how is that not a problem of soaking and therefore washing the, the, uh, the little cloth? Which you put on. So you, this I, I saw in different places talk about it. This is from the Nite Gavriel on Hechos Pesach, Perik um, Zion, and he says Minig Yisrael is to use um, water on Pesach only with uh, stra having strained it. And although not everyone agrees with that, actually, some people don't bother with the straining um, for various reasons. But now he says, um, then he says you should use a. A, a cloth which is designated for this and because it's designated therefore we don't have to worry of you coming to wring it out um now then he says he has a bit of a discussion here because it's designated for this therefore we don't have to worry about your uh, your washing it etc um and it says if you say take some cloth and tie it like a handkerchief or something right tie it around the chap that wouldn't be okay, but if it's just if it's been designated for uh, as a, a, a sleeve as a strainer, then he says heter uh, for that um, because it's miyuchid lekach. Emes, I'll tell you, I, I know miyuchid lekach helps agabe agabe tsevaya. I don't know why it helps for for uh, the issue of of um, malabin. Okay, um, the last thing we're going to address briefly is that someone sent me there's a new uh this is being advertised in northwest london um uh, a new cosmetic line putting on some kind of cosmetic um refresher on shabbos and it's certified by rabbi tawil of um of mexico so he he in this uh, spanish um guidelines he says that it has to be used with a dry brush and used only the same brush, um, not to mix the same brush for different colors, but each color has to have a separate brush. And then he also says um, that the surface where it's placed upon on the skin has to be dry, um, some, of, some other guidelines. He's coming up with a, a he says that this is based upon the uh, guidance of um, Moshe Feinstein. So, all right, so I wanted to look into that a little bit. And here we have from Repaim Noeg Sosa Shulchan. He says, he, I was told about women who put on a color on their faces and they put some kind of powder. If it is, um, if it's just powder without color from before, even though, though the powder does make the make the face look a bit, bit nicer it's not a problem because the powder is dry and it doesn't stick properly to the face so basically that seems to be the same idea if it's a loose powder and it doesn't have some the stickiness which the better powders have it's just going to be a loose powder then it's not severe it's just one thing on top of the other um the second quote is from the piske chuvis in simashin gimel uh, where it talks about cosmetics and Shabbos. And he says, if it is, um, first he says, if it's a white powder, um, which is doesn't change the color, it's just to, to give a bit more refresher. So then he says, if it's, he said, that would be okay. And then he says, if it's a colored powder, um, to but then he says, um, he, he does have a problem with that. If it's going to be a busher, et cetera, um, the main thing is that if, if it does not last and it doesn't doesn't keep doesn't cling to the skin, that seems to be the heter which this is based upon. Um, okay, so that's that's as much as I managed to. I did. I unfortunately didn't look up the Igris Moshe, which uh, he refers to. Um, if necessary, we'll come back to this another time. Meanwhile, I wish you all um, a good Shabbos. I see the question: What do we do about Lag Um I'll tell you, um, I will Hashem, do the shear at this regular time, and um, I'm not, I, I, I expect that the numbers will be a bit less than usual because people will have other uh, uh, activities going on in the covered like Boimer. 
but I don't have a heter. I don't think Rush B will be happy if I cancel this year because of Lag Vemer. And um, whoever doesn't manage to join in next week, it will Bez Hashem get the recording and be able to um, catch up that way. So meanwhile, I wish you all a, uh, a good and Shabbos. And uh, for those who don't join next week, a Freilch and Lag Vemer. Thank you.